Bam. Bam. Did it. Did it. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Did it, did it, did it. Did it, 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 did it. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Okay, come back, people. We're back on. We're back on. Sorry, had a, a Teddy Riley moment. Sorry, right there. Babyface was, uh, he was fine. Riley wasn't. We had a, a Riley. If you don't know, you don't know. If you know, you know what I'm saying when I say a Riley moment. So, so somebody dared me. So, listen, I, um, I was playing my track. I was singing. And I had a guitar, and I took a picture, uh, Johnny took a picture, because Johnny has this habit, he'll take a picture anywhere, right? And somebody says, oh, you're just pretending and all that, right? So I decided, right, listen, 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 like, get your tissue, because you're going to cry from joy. Like, I, I decided I want to do something for you guys. Uh, hold on, Simi has to go quiet, hold on. Hold on, hold on, let me just, let me just switch her off. Right, okay, it's just us, right? Okay, so I'm going to play a little something for you. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, somebody dared me, right? They said, Daddy, that picture was fake, right? And, and, and you don't do that to me. That's, that's wrong. Like, I, I know my, I, this thing here is my friend right here. Okay, so um, and when the record comes out, y'all are going to buy the record, yeah? So that's the plan. So, <clears throat> emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Hold on, hold on. I need to tune it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not fear for COVID-19. Because none of them can. Ah, oh, listen. Like, listen, we'll do it later. We do, I need more people. It's a small audience, man. We, we haven't started. All right, anyway, so let's get started, right? Okay, Danny is my name. Uh, I am, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a business person, a CEO of uh, several companies around the world. Uh, but my main uh, uh, excitement now is on um, Lose Your Mind. Lose Your Mind is my gig right now. Guys, stop laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, this is serious. This is serious, man. I see you guys. Joey, listen. Listen, guys, don't laugh. That guitar will come out, and when it comes out, you, listen. You're gonna want, you're gonna pray that I didn't put it down. Anyway, so um, so so lose your mind. It. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I can sing. What do you mean? So, are you kidding me? I just saw a post like, it, uh, <coughs> you can actually see. Of course, I can sing. If I start the hymns right now, the place will shut down. But anyway, we're not going to sing today. Uh, maybe later when I finish, yeah? But let's crack on. So, so, so listen, so um, Lose Your Mind is about readjusting your mind, rethinking, re-energizing, reconnecting, but also cleansing. It's a brainwash program where we take you and we rinse out all the other old stuff, all right? And, uh, and we bring you up again. We bring you up again. Uh, and, you know, you're a brand new person. You're ready to charge and actually take on the world, right? So what I did yesterday, we did a session. It was fantastic. If you haven't watched it, watch it. If you haven't watched it, watch it. If you watched it, watch it again. If you watched it twice, watch it five times. I'm t I've done that too. So I, I truly believe that um, um, the things that come out of me or the things that I actually plan and do, uh, they're not really stuff that I go, oh my God, I'm so good. No, 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 no. Listen, guys. If you listen, if you steal yourself, if you steal yourself and you go quiet, the big man up there is going to use you to do some incredible things. So I'm blessed to have God in my life. I'm blessed to know that uh, the things that I do is not really because I'm a big man. It's because I have a big man in me. Oh man, that's, that's heavy. I hope you got that one in, right? So we're talking about aim. We're talking about what is aim. Aim is attitude intake and movement. Today I asked a question on one of my uh, 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 channels that I think was, uh, um, I don't know, maybe it was uh, 
uh, Instagram, uh, on my handle, I asked a question, what's attitude in your local language uh, or your mother tongue? And I had some weird answers. I can't even post them. Like I, I might post them after this, but people don't really understand attitude. Attitude is one of the most uh, amazing words, but we talked about it yesterday and we covered a lot of it. So today I'm going to talk about intake, 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 and it will have an element of attitude, but it's mainly to do with your physiology. It's what do you do to build um, very good housing for your, your spirit, your body to, to go in and actually, you know, have a fantastic life and be a, um, a, a representation of what you're supposed to be, which is great, which is a, a, a person who uh, people will actually aspire to hang out with and talk to or whatever. Uh, and that doesn't just come from your physiology, it's from your psychology, physiology, and spirituality. There's a connection between those three entities, right? So I want to talk about the physical aspect and the mental aspect combined today. Yesterday's uh, was a little bit long, so I'm going to try and tune it down today. Uh, probably we'll do it in about 25 minutes. If I can do that, that would be a miracle, but I'm going to try, okay? So uh, what is uh, intake? Intake is about the things you put inside of you, uh, what you ingest in yourself, okay? There's a lot of things we ingest. It's things we drink, things we smoke, uh, whether we know we're smoking them. It could be just air. You know, you're just smoking air. You're breathing air all the time. Uh, it's things that we actually eat. This is the things we ingest, yeah? Now, there's also things that we invite, Oh my God, oh my God. There's things we ingest, things we invite. Watch, yeah? Hey, Roger, uh, Mr. Dubai man. So the things we ingest are uh, really most regarded as food. People say, that's food, I'm eating, this is what I eat, this is food, right? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about food. Food is, uh, is necessary. We, we can't retire from eating and no one is gonna tell you, listen, uh, you can just hang out for two weeks and not eat. You'll be okay. And then uh, come back to me when you're ready. You can eat some food. Food is a necessity. It's essential for our existence. Uh, human beings have to depend on food. And I'm preaching to the choir. Every single person knows this, right? But here's the thing. What exactly are we eating? There's two aspects to food. And this is really important, yeah? There's right food. And there's what we call good food. Mmm. There's good food, there's right food, okay? Now, you can have, there's a fallacy. People say this, they go, but Danny, you can't have good food, that's right food. Oh man, oh man, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to articulate that in the few minutes that we have today. But let me tell you, you can have both right and good food at the same time. I see Bernard, I see Betty, you guys, nice to, nice to hang out with you guys again. Uh, so I want to I show you some of the things that are happening right now, okay? We're going to talk about body nourishment and brain nourishment. Both of them have to be nourished, yeah? One thing will nourish the, 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 the things we put inside nourish your body, the things we put in our head nourish your brain, therefore the instrument or that area that instructs the body to do what it's supposed to do has to also be nourished as equally as the things you put in your mouth. So I, I hope you get it, it's a mouthful, right? So watch this, yeah? The new culture in food is saying to us, um, we're actually supposed to eat things that are convenient. That's the first thing we're doing. We, we're eating convenience. We're not eating food. We're eating convenience. We're eating convenience. Why is that? So we have fast food. We have takeaway. We have, uh, uh, you know, just grab me anything culture. We have, uh, where are you going? Yeah, you, you grab me some food? Yeah, grab me some as well. What, what are you getting? I don't know. Just grab me some. You know, it doesn't matter, right? So we, we're just eating for convenience. You know, it's like a, by the way, I just, I, I'm going to eat something, right? That is one of the worst things uh, that we've actually brought into this new culture that we have. So the fast food culture is born out of poverty of time. People think they don't have time to eat, you know, the right food. Or they think that if they're eating the right food, it's going to take longer and it's going to be very difficult and it's hard to find and it's expensive and it's actually not true. The second thing we do in regards to food is we're eating for fashion. We're eating for fashion. So when you hang out with your friends, they say, you know, what do you want to eat? You go, um, I don't know. What do you think we should eat? And you start thinking and then you come out with these crazy things. You go, let's have pizza. 
And, and, and some African countries, they didn't even know how to say pizza. They used to go, pizza, let's have pizza. So they say, let's have pizza. Let's have, you know, uh, KFC. Let's have, um, you know, all these different, you know, foods. Let's go and have, uh, you know, I don't know, a wrap, uh, shawarma, whatever they call that stuff, you know. And you don't really know what you're eating. But because it sounds good, uh, do you, what do you feel like, an Indian or you feel, you're feeling Chinese? I'm going, dude, you've never even seen China on the map. But you're looking for Chinese restaurants. You go, I want to have Chinese. Now, I think we're not going to have Chinese anymore because you see what's going on. Uh, you know, the bats over there and, and, you know, whatever else is going on. So listen, man, we're eating for fashion. You need to stop that stuff. We have got to go back to the culture of eating food and we stop eating fashion. Okay? Number three, stop eating commercials. You guys are seeing things on television and I'm not saying anybody on this. Uh, right now, if you're listening, you're good. You know, you're, you're not part of this you know, culture, right? But people see stuff on television and they go, I want to buy that. I want to buy that. You know, what's that? That's a chocolate. Uh, what kind of chocolate is it? I don't know, but it looks good. So we're buying commercials. We, you know, they're advertising stuff on television that looks like food. So you buy it. So watch this. And I want to make a point here, right? Let me tell you something that you probably, I think nobody that's listening to me right now has probably ever thought about this, right? I'm going to give it to you right here. Uh, you ready? This is, this has never been spoken about by anybody you know. And if you say, if you agree, type yes in the comment. Are you ready? No food, no food has ever been advertised on television. There has never been a commercial about spinach. There's never been a commercial about cabbage. There's never been a commercial about carrots. Please type yes if you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, let's fight. Say no. I have never seen a TV, but I've seen Cadbury. I've seen KFC. I've seen McDonald's. I've seen Burger King. I have never seen a commercial that says, hey guys, here's a carrot. You know where you buy the carrot? You go to the market, you buy a carrot. I have never seen a commercial that advertises Brussels sprouts. I have never seen a commercial that advertises garlic, ginger. Do you get it now? There is no food in the world that has ever been advertised, yeah? Listen, what they advertise is things that look like food. And somebody said, no, you're going to have to challenge me, right? So listen to me. There are things, type your challenge in there. Some of you said yes. I'm with the yes group. The people who say no, you type your challenge in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that. And I'm going to show you. I have never seen a commercial. There's no farmer that has ever paid money to uh, a, a Kenyan television station, a, a London television station, a Dubai, a Kampala, wherever you are in the world saying, can you please advertise my aubergine? But I've seen McDonald's. I've seen Burger King. I've seen, you know, uh, you, you can go on, man, like all these junk places, the stuff that actually houses things they call food that's not food have to be advertised. So, so stop buying commercials. Stop buying commercials. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Unhealthy food is being confused by many to be cool. And yet the people we idolize, the people we idolize don't eat that stuff. I remember a commercial. Uh, I think it was Michael Jackson and, and Beckham did it afterwards as well. And people say, you know, uh, you know, Michael, Michael likes, Michael was eating, Michael was, was drinking Coca-Cola. And, 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 you know, and they interviewed David Beckham. I don't know if he made a mistake. They asked him a question. They said, they said, do you drink Coke? He says, no. Uh, they, well, you know, I, you know, like we, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes, and then he changed because it was too late. It, they don't drink that stuff. You're buying commercials. You're going out there, you know, having something. Look, when you have, when you have um, a, a bottle of Coke, you're having that much sugar. You're having that much sugar. It's not cool. It's, it's, it's called stupidity. And it's not ignorance anymore. It's negligence. It's negligence, not ignorance. Because you know it's bad for you. You already know you shouldn't be drinking Coke. So this is really important, right? Right food, good food does never 
It has never been advertised. It never really hits the TV stations, no radio stations. I have never heard a commercial that says, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is radio, you know, uh, Kiss 90, whatever, you know, uh, uh, Kiss FM, you know, uh, and hey, you know, we have a commercial coming up, commercial break. Oh, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, carrots are on the market right now, you know, mushrooms are on the market. They don't advertise it. Do you know why? Because food is like gold. In fact, Food is better than gold, but let me tell you, I have never seen a commercial for gold. Oh, we know, we, diamonds are in the market. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to come and buy diamonds? The most precious things in the world are not advertised. They're not commercialized. They know that they're necessities. So food sits in that category. So if you're looking at a commercial and it says, come and eat with us, don't go. Why is that? Because that's not food. Food never gets advertised. You need to change your mindset on the things you're calling food. The things that, that they put on television are not food. They are things that look like food. They appease the taste buds. They appease the, your, your visual uh, senses. Your eyes look at it and go, Ooh, that looks good. You smell it, you go, Ooh, you touch it, it feels crunchy. It's a pizza. But let me tell you something. It's actually dead food that you actually are excited about trying to get life from. You're saying, I want to get life from this food, man. This is great. You know, I'm going to feel great. Nobody says to me, I've just had a pizza. I have so much energy. Like, listen, man, do you know, do you know, how, do you know how strong I feel right now? What happened? I, I ate the pizza, man. I had a pizza. I feel so strong. I've never seen a boxer, I've never seen a footballer saying, you know, hey, it's, it's half time, you know, like it's, uh, it's checkout time, you know, ting, the bell goes and he goes, where's my pizza? Where's my pizza? The people we idolize don't eat that rubbish that's on TV. They eat stuff that's, that's, that's actually in the garden. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come to this, right? So food is like gold and the market for food is permanent. The market for food is permanent. And let me explain that to you. There is no poverty in farming this is I'm trying to make my point here there's absolutely no poverty in farming I have never seen a commercial farmer that's poor they don't come out of season do you know why because they sell precious goods but what we do is there's a correlation between what we eat and what we do to what we eat. And I'm going to go there. There's four P's that I want to cover today. And if anybody's watching this now or you're going to watch it later, don't switch off. Don't blink. There's what we call food production. Food production. The growing process of food. I guess really important. Yeah. There's food preparation. Very important. There's food pres preservation. And then there's food for purpose. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. Food has to be produced. Watch. When I say produced, I'm talking about when you, when you grow food and you eat grown food that's not processed, you actually are growing your body. When you eat dead food that's not food that's been marketed as food, guess what you're doing? And I, and I want you to finish it. What are you doing? Are you growing your body or are you killing your body? So there's, there's two areas of food here. There's a food production and the food processing. Food production, food processing. Okay. It's always important to eat fresh food. It's always important to eat fresh food. It doesn't really matter. Uh, eat, eat grown food. 90% of the food you eat, and there's a lot of meat lovers on this channel. Listen. It's okay, you can love your meat. I, I have me some meat sometimes, you know. Uh, I'm a part-time vegetarian. But listen, let me tell you something, right? Do not play with this. The things that are grown, when you eat them, they grow you. I want you to hear this one. The things that you eat that are grown will actually grow you. The things that are grown and they're killed and put through a process where they're completely cremated... And completely, completely, you know, like they have been incinerated by the cooking or the preservation process. Those things, unfortunately, the way they kill them, they will kill you. You know, so here's what I say. This is what I'm saying, right? 
This is what I'm saying. Whatever you put in your body is going to do exactly what was done to it. Whatever you put in your body is going to do exactly what was done to it. So when you take oxygen and you pollute it and you release it into the atmosphere, somebody takes it, what happens? You have just killed the air. You've disturbed the natural existence of pure oxygen. Guess what? Anyone who inhales that, it has the potential to damage them because it's damaged air. When you damage food and you process it to a point where it's completely toxic, when it goes in your body, you don't have to be a scientist, come on. When it goes in your body, it's going to do damage because it's damaged food. So happy food that's alive will actually make you a happy person. It will put things in your body that will nourish you. So the food production is good. People are growing the right food. Watch this. The prep is the problem. We bring good organic food to our kitchens. We do things to that food. And unfortunately, we render the food to lose its nutritional value. And then what we do is we make the food a housing. It becomes a housing for toxins. So every time you consume that food, you're no longer consuming what, was, what, what, what is food. You're consuming the, the housing of what was food, carrying toxins into your bloodstream. And then you wonder why people are getting sick. We have designer diseases right now. People are talking about, you know, uh, you know, mine is bigger than yours. Like, I got cancer, man. Like, what, what do you have? Uh, I have cholesterol. That's too small. People are talking about this stuff, right? They, people are talking about, you know, these diseases like it's normal. I meet people, they say, my son has diabetes. I say, how old? They say, he's, he's six years old. I say, okay, well, he has what diabetes? Say, Type 2 diabetes. I say, your son is six years old and he's carrying diabetes in their body. And then it's funny how the parents were oblivious to it. We go, well, you know, you know, you know how things are these days. No, I don't know. I just know that if you eat grown food that doesn't have chemicals and you preserve it and you cook it in the right environment, that's not going to contaminate the food. Guess what? I know that you have a chance at life. There is no medicine out there that cures disease. There is no medicine. Watch. And I'm telling you this, and I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you from a personal experience and from understanding my study of food and the human body. I'm not a doctor. But one thing I know for sure is our immune system is our defense mechanism. If somebody has an immune system that has been completely compromised, and watch this, the biggest thing that compromises the immune system is food. Why is that? Because... It's, it's actually no longer food. It's a housing for toxins. It's been cooked to death. It's been, you know, uh, made to carry uh, plastics into your, into your bloodstream. It's been meant to carry metals into your bloodstream. It's been meant to carry those toxins, that pollution into your bloodstream. Therefore, what it does is it suppresses the immune system. The body is intelligent. The body has soldiers. If you think of your body cells as an army of soldiers, they are thinking, they are talking, they are planning, they do things, they are very intelligent. Your cellular system is so intelligent and so organized. But if you don't equip it with the right ammunition, unfortunately, it will absolutely let you down. If it's compromised, it compromises you, your performance. Food has a direct link with your psychology. Your brain feeds on food. It needs nutrients. It needs oxygen. Now, the amount of oxygen that's going to go into your brain is directly related to the kind of food you're eating and, you know, how you're eating that food, how the food is being processed. So it's a four piece, as I mentioned, right? It's a production of food. That's good. There's a lot of care and attention that's put into producing food. And most of you buy organic food. It's the prepping of food that we need to fix. You've got to remove pollution in your food. You've got to stop cooking your food and killing it and cooking it to death. You have got to stop binging on meat as if it was no tomorrow. People think meat is actually ceremonial. Some people go, I had meat today, man. I've never seen anybody say, I had carrot today, man. I had spinach. I had sukuma wiki. Oh my God. You know what? I'm so, I, I feel, I, oh, I'm so lucky. 
I went to see this lady, and you know what they gave me for lunch? They gave me, they gave me vegetables. I was so happy. People celebrate meat. So that stuff is actually what's making us sick. And of course, the preservation of food, uh, you know, you have to put it uh, in an environment. And this is why uh, for the guys who actually work with me, uh, I'm so passionate about this. That's why I actually had to go into a business that allows us to protect food. Because when you protect food, you protect life. Uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you cook the right way, when you store your food in the right environment, when you have your food uh, scientifically protected, just the same way we protect it in the gardens, the same way we protect it in the coolers, the same way we protect it in the, in the supermarket. If we do the same process in the kitchen, what happens is what lands on your plate is life filled. So live food has the potential to elevate you and give you life. Now you cannot do well unless you're well. So part of aim is you have to have an aim to have a great attitude and a great intake. And the, the last part of it is purpose. Food on purpose. You have to feed on food on purpose. Watch this, yeah? There is no point in eating cardboard as food. There's absolutely no point in sitting down and enjoying a good, nice, you know, long strip of cardboard. Because the reason we don't do that is not because people will think we're insane and they will. It's because we know there's nothing in it. So say hello to chips. Say hello to KFC chicken that has been cooked in 200 degrees in oil that's been used five times in the last week five days of oil going into that chicken breadcrumbs i don't know what's in there there's a reason we don't eat cardboard so when you take food that was live food and you make it cardboard why are we eating it so you have to feed on purpose because when you feed on purpose watch this when you feed on purpose it should be nourishing. Food has to go in the dictionary after this and look up the definition of food. If it ceases to nourish you, to build your immune system, your nervous system, if it doesn't have those phytochemicals in it, if it doesn't have those nutrients in it, it's no longer food. You may have a little roughage, but there's so many things you can put in your body that will actually act as roughage. There are things you can put, you can actually put bad stuff in your body and have diarrhea, which means it's going to really go in there and mess up with your metabolism and go, whoa, and the body says, okay, we need to flush this out. But if you're intentional about food, you have to eat the right food on purpose. This is really, really powerful. And the last part um, is, you, you remember this, right? Remember, food is supposed to give you energy. It's supposed to defend your body. It's supposed to grow you. It's supposed to repair you. It's supposed to be pleasurable. Food that's cooked in the right way, whole food, that's organic food, is actually pleasurable. But if food ceases to do those things, what it does is it will damage you. The number one killer in the world right now for lifestyle diseases is food. So when food is messed with, and you mess with it, and you make it toxic and poisonous, it will say, thank you for killing me. I'm going to go in the body. I'm going to kill you too. Don't mess with food. Whatever you do to that thing that you're going to eat is going to do it to your body. If you, if you kill it, it's going to put it in your body. The killing element. If you Listen to me. If you put oil and you fry at very high temperature and the oil becomes toxic, it will put it in your body. It will say, you know, it's okay. It's okay. You go ahead. You kill me. This is Mr. Onion speaking. Onion says, you kill me, right? And Gali comes and says, they're killing me too. They say, yeah, okay, no, don't worry. And the tomatoes come and you kill them too. You kill everything. And you put it in there. And it says, okay, okay. And it will go in your body and says, okay, so you thought you are going to kill us. And we're not going to mess with you. These things are intelligent. And your body cells have a memory that's everlasting. Your cells are recording the trauma that you're putting in your system. And they're building defense systems based on how much trauma they're facing. Because whenever you're at war, you, you recruit more soldiers. Wherever you anticipate war, you get more soldiers ready, you get more ammunition. So now, instead of the body cells giving you vitality, they're spending more time trying to defend your body system. Because they know that you have a potential, and you have the propensity, and you have the, the tendency, if you like. I can use all words in the dictionary to describe this. You have the tendency of actually feeding it on poison. 
So the, the cells go, get ready. He's starting to eat. So the enzymes start to go, you know, what's going on? What, what, what are we doing? Uh, they sends it in and then boom, the liver is activated. Everything is trying to process, process, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Man, we are made, uh, we are strong as beings. So you've got to understand your body culture. Your body culture is directly related to your food culture. Now, on top of that, ingesting this, books, 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 things that you put in your head, right? So we put the right stuff in our, in our system, okay? Now you have to educate your mind on how to instruct this incredible machine that you built with the right food, how to behave, how to act. You want to switch off as much as possible news. News is derogatory. It's the most negative thing. Listen, news has never ever reported positivity. There's a woman around the corner who's giving birth. And there's a guy around the corner who's beating the life out of his wife. The cameras will be switched to the wife beater, not the life giver. This is what I need you to understand. So you need to get away from that stuff and focus on things that give life. Because beating up your wife is not life-giving. It's life-taking. It's, it's, it's idiotic. So now if you focus on death, what happens is you start to kill your brain. So your brain starts to go, let's get ready, guys. Remember, it's the cells. The cells go, let's get ready. There's more negativity coming. Because when you're negative, your body starts to secrete those, you know, toxins. You know, you, you, you start to, to get toxic. You know, like all this, the acid and stuff boils up in your body. And you start, you know, people start saying, this lady is really toxic. You are. You're walking around as a time bomb. Anytime you can go off. So this is, this is my remedy. I spend time educating my mind on things that nourish my body. The way you nourish your, listen, there's mental nourishment, there's body nourishment. The two go hand in hand. So I read books that inspire me. I read books that make me aspirational. I read books that, that challenge my thinking. I'm reading stuff about, you know, uh, what, what, what happened before. Like, the, the, you know, this his, history is such a great educator, man. There's a lot of stuff that happened. And human beings were wired for one thing. Our ultimate goal in life is survival. It's stay alive. You can stay alive, dead. Or you can stay alive and live a life that's filled with life. If you're constantly sick because of what you ingest in your body and in your head, then unfortunately you're dead alive. So I want to encourage you to... Uh, to do this, um, to, to nourish your, 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 your mentality, to feed your mentality the right way, uh, I want to give you uh, uh, a couple of tips and then I'll close the show, okay? One is the mental intake is derived from your experiences. Start to amplify, start to have a, um, a strain, uh, or a strainer rather, not a strain, a strainer, or start to restrict yourself from experiencing things that will actually uh, make you toxic. Okay? You need to do that. And how do you do that? It's very simple. You need to watch your experiences. You need to watch the people you're spending time with. You need to watch the things you, you're watching on television. You need to watch the things you're reading. I, I saw somebody reading a book about murders. They go, this is how people get murdered. You know, it, I, you know, I'm reading a book about the mind of a murderer. What is that? What are you doing? Are you testing your capability because the devil is alive? If you go into his camp and you test him, he's going to use you. So, so I, I, I challenge myself. I say, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to... I don't want to chance it. I don't want to find out how good I am. I don't want to find out how nourished my brain is. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to test it. I want to remember that I am supposed to guard everything from the neck up is supposed to be guarded. So, 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 so your experiences have to be controlled. What are you reading right now? Read stuff that's going to nourish your brain your brain is happy 
you have all these things, these beautiful hormones coming out. You go, whoa, man, I feel so good. Like, you know, have you ever read a piece of literature and you say, I can't believe that was so good. There's some books that I read. There's some books I read. I can't put them down. But I don't, I, I'm not a good reader. Like, I, I read five books at the same time. So I study chapters. I go, chapter this, chapter that, chapter that. And sometimes I reference books and, and stuff like that. So I'm not one of those that will study. I mean, you, I've got some books here. You can see some of my books here. And, and I have a ton of books over in my office and stuff like that. But listen, read the right stuff. Stop reading newspapers about, you know... Uh, the, the desperate housewife of this, now she's left the show. And because she's left the show, uh, the other friends are really upset. And then, you know, they, they don't know what's going to happen in the next episode. And people spend an hour reading that article. And I go, what is wrong with you, man? Like, how much are you going to get from that? People go, you know, there's a, there's a show called Big Brother, man. Like, you know, I'm following that. Like, I watch that. You know, I spend two hours a night. And then I go back and I play all the other episodes and stuff like that. And, and it's called Big Brother. Why don't you become Big Brother? Why don't you put a camera in your house and watch your own show? And build up yourself and, and say, you know, I have my own show. Do you want to watch my show? Do you want to watch my show? Watch my show and pay me. Because what are you doing? You're watching somebody else on the screen talking rubbish. And you go, I'm watching Big Brother. Don't disturb me. No phone calls. Somebody calls you, they say, I have a business deal for No, 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 no. Listen, whatever you do, do not call me when, um, I don't know what they call them, Love Island is on. When there's Love Island at 6 o'clock in the night, do not call me, right? And I'm watching this thing on Netflix, you know, it's a program. It's about, you know, killing people. Yeah, you know, the, the guy who was called Bundy, yeah, the, the, the murderer in America, he's on, man. Like, I don't want you to mess with my brain. I want to focus on Bundy. See how he killed these people. What are you doing? You don't put garbage in your brain and then say, why am I speaking garbage? Because you feed on garbage. So it's garbage in, garbage out. How, how am I supposed to say something else? Whatever you internalize is externalized. It's how it works. The other thing is stop the gossip, man. Like, don't listen to these trash carriers. There are people who carry lots of trash in your mouth. So every time they speak, they, 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 have, they have an opinion about everything and everybody. And we spend a lot of time talking to these people. So guess what? They recruit you. You become part of the process. Instead of being a solution to the problem, you become part of the problem. Don't chance it. Don't test yourself. If you hang around a bunch of people that are carrying trash, they, every time they speak, it almost stinks, you know? Uh, and sometimes, you know, watch very carefully. People that have a bad breath, they are trash talkers. Their breath stinks because, you know, they have a lot of toxins in their blood. You know people who stink in the mouth, right? They, they eat along the, the, the wrong stuff all the time. They always, they, <laughs> they consume garbage, so garbage comes out. And you smell like it too. The last three things, focus. Whatever you focus on becomes who you become. So your, your most dominant thoughts, your most dominant activities are what you're actually going to project out there. So you've got to be very careful. Don't spend too long in things that actually uh, are going to um, uh, derail you from your, your objective. Don't spend too long. Don't do that stuff. Like, be very careful. Yeah? Whatever you're focused on. So if, if you're pissed off about something... Get pissed off for five minutes and you say, Danny, I'm going to give you five minutes to get really mad. So time yourself and then you, you put on the alarm. The alarm says, okay, time to finish. You know, now you, you've been pissed off for five minutes. It's okay. Just, just stop. You've had your pissed off moment. Yeah. You can time yourself. And then say, I'll pick it up tomorrow. I get, I get mad tomorrow. I'll, I'll carry in tomorrow. Okay. But right now I'm done. I'm done. I'm done getting mad. Don't focus on it. The last two, frequency. Yeah, that the time, the amount of time you spend doing something determines how good you become at that something. So watch this. Yeah, if you spend time consuming the wrong things in your head and you do it every day, the series every day, every single day, the series of, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Bundy, the, the, the Grim Rippler, whatever they call it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this guy who used to kill people for fun. Yeah, if you spend frequently you, you indulge these things or you have meetings about people 
uh, that are toxic or you have gossip meetings or you go to the wrong place. Even in some, some religious institutions, you go in there and you, it's amazing. Like people have cliques. And these cliques are to trash the pastor and the pastor's wife and the imam and they took our money and, you know, and they, they're campaigning. They're going, you know, this place is, you know, oh, uh, you wait next week when I come back. I want to be talking to people again. Be careful. The frequency with which you indulge those people is going to become a habit. And when it becomes a habit, it becomes who you are. You are your habits. The last part is that word that I just your habits are built over time. You don't pick them up tomorrow and go, yeah, I'll just pick a new habit. No, no, no. You pick a new habit. They say you break a habit in 21 days. You can create one in 21 days, right? So you've got to be very careful not to hang out with people that are going to give you uh, those things. So I'm about to play my song uh, and then I'll finish. But I'm going to finish on the story. And some of you know this story very well. This is how when you hang out with people that are toxic, it can influence you. It's a story of a guy who is trying to commit suicide. You know the story. And some of you are cringing because you've heard it like a million times. You know, if you've listened to me before. So the guy is on the hedge. He's committing suicide. He's going. He says, I'm going. I'm going. That's it. Uh, that's it. So people come in and they say, man, don't do this. You know, this is wrong. He said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Like, my life is in trouble. I'm going. I'm gone. That's it. It's, it's over. So... Everybody's encouraging this guy. They say to him, look, man, you should pray, you know, maybe talk to God. He said, where is God? He said, I spoke to God. I asked him all the questions and God didn't come. You know, he, where has he been? I've been suffering. He says, I am going. That's it. So they look around the crowd and they see this guy in the collar and he's a priest. And they say, there's a priest here. Oh my God, there's a priest. That's great. Pri you know, pastor, please talk to this man. Man of God. So man of God steps up. He says, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. I want you to just, just come, come. Let me, let me give you a hug. The man said, no, 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 no. And he threatens to jump. No, 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 don't, don't jump, don't jump. Let me pray for you. Let me pray with you just before, uh, you know, you jump. You know, I, I want to just pray with you. And then if you want to jump after the prayer, you can still jump. The man said, okay. He said, are you sure, pastor? He said, yes, I'm sure. He goes, just give me 10 minutes. We pray together. If you're still feeling how you're feeling, you can jump. And the whole crowd is like, ooh, ooh, the wait, the wait. So the man gently steps off the hedge and he, he lands on the ground and he says, okay, right. So I'm here now. So what are we going to do? So the pastor said, can I grab you a coffee? Can we go have a coffee? He said, ah, oh, man, you said we're going to pray. No, 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 let's just have a coffee. We pray over a coffee. No, but they walk over to a place where they were Starbucks or one of these commercial uh, enterprises, the ones they advertise, <laughs> the ones they advertise, yeah? It's not food. I'm telling you, food never gets advertised. So watch this. So, so they go in and they sit in the coffee shop, right? And they sit in the coffee shop and, uh, and, and they, they sit in there and they go, so, you know, they're talking and people are watching them in the glass. And you know how people, like I said, you know, bad news is attractive. Misery loves company. So bad news gets the press. So people are here, they're with their phones, they're watching, they're going, what is going on? They're watching, they're going, what's going on? So the, the pastor is in there, he's talking to the guy, he's talking to the guy, and then they see the guy take over the conversation and he's talking, he's talking to the pastor, he's talking to the pastor. And the pastor is, is nodding his head, he's nodding his head, and, and he's sitting there and it's half an hour and it's 40 minutes and, and it's an hour and it's two hours. But it's bad news, so guess what? People aren't going to go home. They go, I want to know what's happening. I want to know. So people, they come outside. So, so the pastor stands up and the guy stands up and they shake hands and they're both shaking their heads and uh, they walk out. And the, the crowd is waiting and everybody's holding their breath and the pastor and the guy walk together and they keep walking and then they jump to the head, they get to the hedge and both of them jump. They both commit suicide. Listen. Don't test the devil. Don't test the devil. Don't, don't, don't take your light into the darkness and say, you know, I know how to do this stuff. You know, we, we, we're made in his likeness. We're not him. Do, do you understand? We're not him. 
right? Whilst I know we will, be, we will always be protected, I am not going to chance it. I'm not going to test myself. So what I want you to do is remember that story. And in relation to the people that you have, the experiences you're having, the television stations you're watching, the horror movies you watch it. Because you have seen people watch a movie in a theater, they go buy a gun, they start shooting everybody. They start shooting everybody. You know why? Do you know why? Because they saw somebody doing it on the screen. Well, movies are fiction. Life is factual. Don't test it. Don't bring fiction into facts because the two will clash. But fiction repeated over time becomes fact. So therefore, if you hang out with people over a long time, what you thought was just, oh, it's just my friend. And I know I can hear some of you say, but Danny, what if they're my friends? What am I going to do? Am I not going to talk to them? Hey, 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 hey. You are not trained as a shrink. You're not a shrink. You're not a counselor. It's not your job. Do you understand? It's not your job. Your job is to love upon them, but do not play the shrink. Because those guys go to school. They go to therapy school. They, they spend years studying the human behavior, human brains. And y'all are going to sit down for five minutes and talk to someone. They say, look, you know, uh, listen, I have an issue. I need to talk to you. Where are you? I'm at home. Uh, can I come over? Yeah, come over. And you go to Bob's house and Bob was happy. Bob was happy. He was excited. He was humming around the house. He hugged you when you came in. Before you go, Bob is ready to commit suicide with you. Bob wants to jump with you, commit suicide. Why? Because you intoxicate people with your negativity. So... I want, I want to close it there and I want to encourage you, watch what you're physically putting in your body. The intake is very important. Watch what you physically are putting in your mind because whatever you're putting in your mind through books, through audios, through anything that, you know, there's a lot of coronavirus audios going around. There's a lot of conspiracy theories going around saying the world is going to end. There's a lot of people saying they're prophets. They know they've seen tomorrow. Dude, are you kidding me? I don't know who is more gullible, the person who's saying it or the person who's listening to it. You know, they almost got me. I, I, I spent a little bit of time when this thing started. I was reading this stuff. I was studying it. And then I said, Daddy, come on, man. What are you doing? And some of you know, because I, I shared some of these things with one or two people. But then I said, oh, man. I'm one of them. I went to try and, you know, take it off. And I couldn't take it off, man. I, I wanted to delete it. I was like, I can't believe this stuff. It, it dents your reputation. It makes you look bad. When you start sending out, you know, those kind of audios and those types of uh, uh, messages to people, they, they, they think you're a joker. I, I'm part of some groups. And let me tell you, man, I, you know what I do with those groups? One, I mute all of them. And then every hour, I will go on the group and go on the top of my phone. I press uh, the, the thing. It drops down. It says clear chart. I don't see anything. I'm too embarrassed to leave the group because they, they, they're supposed to be important groups. And people say you need to build a network. Your network can determine your worthlessness. Your network is supposed to determine your net worth. Your network could be the ticket to bankruptcy. Be very, very careful. You are telling people I'm part of this group. What group is that? What do they do? What is their most dominant conversations? Oh, we don't like the president. Oh, we don't like this. And why are they not giving us, you know, somebody was saying, you know, uh, the other day, they sent me a message saying, you're such a rich guy. Why don't you send us food? Listen, man, listen, listen. I help people that I want to help and I do it all the time and I love doing it and I'm passionate about it. But that's, that's incredible. People think, people think because you're doing well in life that you're supposed to owe them. And I, I don't care that it's controversial. You're not, you don't owe people. Do you understand? You're supposed to help people. This is helping you. This is putting some information in your head that could change your life right now. I'm brainwashing you for the good. But, but you know, it's not quantifiable. We can't carry it in a basket and hand it to somebody and go, oh, look what this guy's doing. The best things in life are not measurable, like intuition. Like we said yesterday, you cannot measure intuition. 
There's no science in the world that can measure the degree of intuition that you have. There's no one in the world that can experience your intuitive self like you can. So that's the experience with God. Only you can experience God for yourself. Even pagans do. When they sleep, they see God, they panic, they go, this thing might be real, you know, like God might, whoa, I saw something last night. They see God. So they rebel, they go, but I'm a rebel. I, I'm not going to tell people. I remember it was, I think it was Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was into this religion that, you know, he, 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 was, he was so focused on it. And when he accepted Christ, he, he said, he said, he said, man, he said, I, I was so embarrassed to, to leave and to, to tell people that I'm no longer a bad boy and I'm no longer a gangster. And, and so that's why I stayed there. But for a long time, I was so embarrassed because I knew it was ludicrous what I was doing. The best thing in life, you cannot quantify them. So this is a gift. And it might help one person, maybe not you on the call, but these messages that come to me, these things that I read about, I like to share them. Why? Because I want people to get better, to lose their minds. I don't want you to clap for me. I want you to go home and have every single person stand up from wherever they are and give you a round of applause because you've changed and you've changed for good. And you're changing the world around you. You see, success is more powerful when it's observational. When people watch you being successful, it's inspirational and they become aspirational. When people watch you talking about success, the desperate housewives, oh, they drive a nice car. Oh, they have a swimming pool in their living room. Oh my God. That's not, that's, that's depressing. That's depressing, man. That's depressing. Okay. So I've seen comments. I don't know if there was any question that was coming through. Yesterday, there were questions I couldn't answer because I didn't see them. Uh, but if you have any question, you have one minute to throw it on the screen and I'll answer it as quickly as I can. But today was the end of, um, uh, listen, so this is the end of intake. Okay. Intake. Intake is done. We know not to put stuff in the body that's going to harm us. Whatever you do to something and you put it in your body, it will do to you. If you protect and preserve the nutrient value in your food and you put it in your body, it will protect your body. Ah, It will preserve your body. Ah. And then people start saying, oh, anti-aging. There's no anti-aging. It's called anti-decaying. The body decays. It doesn't age. When you put the wrong stuff, I'm, I'm telling you, I want to be a hundred years old and look like this. And if I, if, I, if I have a nice dance with my body cells and I teach them how to be so excited and I feed them with all this great juice and, and positivity and I, and I cut down on all those sugars, cut down on my fruits and, and the things that actually feed these carcinogens in the body, I have a chance. And somebody said, some medicine, listen, some of the cancer medicine is carcinogenic. Are you kidding me? Some of the medicine to treat a disease causes the disease. So it's not, listen, it's not health care. It's disease care. When you look after the food you eat, that's called health care. Wellness comes from food, not from medicine. Most medicines have side effects. They say it may even be fatal. It may make you dizzy. It may make you throw up. I've never seen those tags on carrots. I've never seen those tags on broccoli. I've never seen those tags that said side effects for broccoli. Are you kidding me? I have never seen those. But I've also never seen broccoli being advertised. But these pharmaceuticals... The medicine is advertised. Do you get it now? Anything that's on TV, don't buy. Anything that's not on TV, you seek it out. Farmers are rich because they, have, they sell precious goods. They don't sell anything that you can just you know, pick up. Farmers are wealthy. They're wealthy. They're dealing in life's most essential thing, food. Are you kidding me? They're wealthy. And I'm going to finish on this, and this is great. This is what, when you eat bad food, this is what happens to you, right? You, we often look like the food we eat. Do you know that? 
The people who come from these cow places that drink a lot of milk and stuff, they look like the cows. They, they're walking like cows, you know, they, they, they look like the cows. People who come, I'm telling you, we look like the things we eat. <laughs> You're gonna laugh at this. I'm telling you, like, you see the Chinese dudes, you see, you see the have you seen the rice fields? They're really small, like the, the, the rice fields. <laughs> So the Chinese, I'm telling you, we look like the things that we eat. We do. We do. So, so start, start, you know, asking yourself, how do I want to look like? I've never seen a really obese spinach. I, you know, the, the, the genetically modified ones, I, I, they're obese. They even come as twins. They have five heads. I've seen a potato with heads, you know. It's a potato, an Irish potato. They, they, they're, they're genetically modified. So watch what happens. When they're genetically modified, they take on the shape of those chemicals that have been ingest, injected in them. And when you eat those foods that have been genetically modified, that have been injected with steroids, they say, thank you. You eat me. I'm going to inject you with the same steroids. So now you have things growing in, uh, in your stomach like the potato did. This is not a joke, guys. I'm doing it in a humorous way, but I'm telling you, this is serious. We are what we eat, and we look like what we eat. What do you want to look like? Like this beautiful, slender, you know, spinach? Beautiful? Or do you want to look like a cow that's been injected with hormones? Okay? That's it. If there's no questions, that's it, guys. Uh... Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, for the guys that work with me, I'm going to do a CEO mentorship class in the morning. But tomorrow evening is the, final, is the finale of the aim. Attitude, intake, tomorrow we're going to talk about movement. And you think movement is as you know it. Tomorrow's class is very, very different. Okay? So don't come. If you're feeling weak, it's going to be a little bit... Uh, it's going to expose some of you. It's going to expose some of you. Right? So tomorrow is about movement. And then once we master it, uh, the fourth class will be about how do we apply this in our lives. I'm going to show you how we can apply this in our lives. And you're all going to have not just a healthy lifestyle, a wealthy lifestyle, and a happy lifestyle. And you're going to attract happiness in your life. Money will look for you. Happy people will look for you. God will look for you. Everything that you've always wanted will look for you because you have aim. That's it. God bless you. Share this with everyone. All right.